Hey everybody, Tired Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. After what was a busy weekend that ended up turning out to be thankfully a whole lot of nothing, we're um, looking ahead towards next week. Before I get into that though, I do want to say thank you for everyone who did show up to the stream here, especially uh, those of our new subscribers here. Definitely appreciate you guys, as well as the old ones. Don't you know you're not forgotten but that being said here definitely am appreciating the support it's been slow so whatever support i can get or wh whoever uh, sticks around i definitely want to say appreciate you guys before i get into this video here so overlook on the current or the overview i should say on the current situation we still have severe weather possible today but the threat has dropped off tremendously even now, the uh, slight risk has shrunk all the way down towards far south Georgia here and right on the edge of the Florida panhandle. I think the uh, tornado threat honestly could even be downgraded to a marginal threat at best. I mean, if we really look at uh, what happened yesterday, you could kind of see it on radar. I didn't really talk about it as much, but the convection just wasn't really there like there was convection but it wasn't the healthy convection that you would need for thunderstorm development so that was a big inhibiting factor not a lot of daytime heating either i mean we still had uh, temperatures in the 60s and 70s over here towards alabama and uh, mississippi over here also louisiana i mean there were a few tornado warnings periodically throughout the day but definitely nothing to where anything major definitely nothing to where what we were originally seeing on the forecast especially with the enhanced risk being in effect with the uh, hatched risk for tornadoes even with the uh hail threat yesterday just not really much really came of that but again like i said it has a lot to do with that um surface convection from yesterday the uh most of the hail was over towards uh louisiana and texas in particular the further east we got the worse the, the uh, crummier or the crappier the convection got. So, in other words, we aren't really uh, going to be expecting too much more from the severe weather. Wouldn't be surprised to see maybe a tornado warning or two pop up randomly, maybe at best. Uh, and then flood threat has really become the main topic here. While not a significant one, there still is a pretty sizable slight risk area that encompasses a lot of uh, southeastern Alabama here, almost all of Georgia here, excluding the northern regions, but we're still in the marginal risk, and then a good chunk of South Carolina as well. Looking at the radar here to the left, you can kind of see that complex of showers and storms still ongoing here and expected to continue, but we are getting towards the end of it, so we will see a downtrend on that risk. And then from that point, over the next couple of days, conditions are expected to be much calmer as far as the severe and flood side, or at least over here towards the east. Out west, we're looking at a different picture here, and we're going to go ahead and get into what those models are looking like here. So we're looking high up into the atmosphere right now, but the main thing that we're trying to uh, get a good look at here is just what our storm track is going to be like. There's usually two of them. And this is that first one right here, but not much is really going to be coming of that. The more significant storm is definitely this feature right here. And we're going to see this, of course, move out by tomorrow, but not before we end up seeing a good bit of winter precip, even a little bit of a uh, nor'easter trying to get going over here towards the New England region. Then after that, we start to see a little bit more in the way of stable weather and maybe even a little bit of a warm up, albeit not a significant one. It's definitely something to make note of here and it's kind of represented by this ridging here and you'll be able to see this on both models but as we get towards friday it looks like we get another storm system to sneak in here and this may be a snow maker towards the ohio valley maybe even the tennessee valleys here then eventually the northeast could get hit with another uh, brief clipper system before we go forward and start to see some more ridging coming in right around this last week of February here. And then we're on the lookout for a couple of storm systems right around the end of the month here. And the thing to make note of here is the uh, year only goes up to 240 hours. GFS goes to 384. So we'll kind of just pick up where we left off from there. And for the most part, like I said, pretty much the same thing. 
you always have to be careful looking at these models because it can literally become the tail of two models. These don't always show the same thing every time, which makes forecasting awfully difficult at times. But for the most part, we're pretty congruent here. Right around 204 hours out, we do start to see some ridging out towards the east. And this piques my concern in the long run, maybe for severe weather. Obviously, with the time frame that we're looking at right now, it's uh, very uncertain, I would say. But if this trend holds out, maybe towards the 22nd, the afternoon of the 22nd, we could be looking at some severe potential. Maybe over here towards uh, Texas, just to the east of Dallas, maybe uh, Arkansas as well. But we'll have to uh, kind of let everything settle here before we start to really get into the details of that. And then after that point, I see a pretty calm pattern for at least a couple of days, pretty much the same trend that we've been seeing. And then towards the end of this run, and keep in mind, 16 day, days out, 384 hours, far too long to even try to make any sort of any sort of forecast or even an outlook hardly. But one thing I am noticing is the ridging here. So we're going to be seeing a warm up over a fair part of the country here from the central part, even towards the east here. But this storm system, if it can maintain this orientation of tilt here or even uh, start to uh, strengthen from this point, not only do we have the threat of atmospheric river conditions out west, we could maybe be looking at more severe weather potential out to the east here to start the month of February because this is right around the 28th where this storm system comes into the west remember this is a leap year so we do have 29 days to deal with but still right around the start of March here I wouldn't be surprised to see a little activity over here towards maybe the central plains the southern plains and maybe a little bit more activity to the east of course we're at the end of this model run here so we're going to be probably waiting almost a week before we get any sort of clear indication on what's going to happen with that and that's even really that's even a semblance of that you never really know what these systems are going to do until maybe three days out if you're lucky but fact of the matter is though with the changes that we're seeing with the wind pattern that's going to be reflected in the temperatures and we can see the changes based on the temperature map if we put it into motion here. You can see as we go into next week here, you can see that cold air trying to invade. That's represented by the troughing that we were seeing. And then when we get later down the line, we'll run it again. You can see that warm air starting to push a little bit back up to the north with that ridging. It's a little bit of that uh, push-pull type deal whenever you look at those uh, pressure maps that's one way to kind of think about it and one way to learn how to read them but this is what the euro is showing and like i said once we get towards the back half of february particularly towards that last week is when we start to see that warming up begin to occur here especially over towards texas we go to the gfs we're going to see a pretty similar deal here you can see that we're going to be dealing with a little bit of a cool down as we head towards next week along with the potential for a couple other wintry systems like we mentioned before but once we get past 150 hours out look at how much further that warm air pushes in comparison to the euro based off the gfs here so could be some active times ahead here and like i said gfs is showing some pretty interesting stuff here of course it is a little bit later into the run though so like i said can't put a lot of merit into it but if this does end up becoming the case here we could potentially have a bit more of an active pattern here to close out february and start march how frequent the storms will be still like i said is kind of up in the air at this point so next thing we'll do is go ahead and look at our precipitation and then we'll get into what's ahead here mainly for the uh winter weather and the uh rainfall totals in particular Severe weather for right now, with the pattern being a little bit more docile, it's going to be a bit quieter. So we'll look at all that in just a second, though. But this is what the euro is showing us. We'll wait for it to load. And here is this current storm system. Still a little bit of a question as to what's going to happen over here towards western Tennessee in regards to snowfall. We're going to be right on the cusp of that freezing temperature. So really, what what ends up happening is going to be heavily dependent on the lower levels of the atmosphere here 
go ahead and actually look at a sounding around this time frame to see what we end up getting. And it kind of looks like we're dealing with maybe a little bit of a temperature inversion at the lower levels, a little bit of wedging. So we could potentially get rain. We may get snow, may even get a little bit of sleet at one point. But um, main thing that I would be concerned about is maybe the threat of freezing rain really is going to be heavily dependent on some of that warm air advection that we get with that Gulf of Mexico moisture. So as a whole here, and keep in mind, this is just the euro we're looking at right now. And GFS is also also has to be looked at as well. And it could, like I said, it could paint a different picture there. But as we continue to go forward here, here's our nor'easter system. Euro is not quite as on board with this as some of the other models that I've seen. And of course, these can be pretty finicky. If this uh, low pressure here jogs a little bit further towards being inland, it could result in greater snowfall totals up towards the uh, coast here. But if we push away, then obviously we're going to have a little bit less because there's going to be less moisture available and less time for there to be snowfall over these regions. Eventually, as we continue to go forward, here's that next little clipper system that I was referring to earlier. And then here's another clipper system, which could maybe drop some snow over towards the Ohio Valley, maybe even into the Tennessee Valley. It's going to be close, but it's a classic case also towards the deep south of that moisture outrunning the cold. So I wouldn't get too excited if you're over towards southern Tennessee or northern Alabama, Georgia, maybe Mississippi might get in the action at best. Might see some lake effect snow as well as we go towards next week. And then after that, here is where things really start picking up out west. We're going to start to see the return of the atmospheric river. We never really got a big, big break from it, but it looks like in particular the Sierras are going to be a point of interest. Southern California, unfortunately, which has been hit really hard with flooding, may be in the action once more. And it looks like that trend is going to continue throughout the rest of this model run, maybe slowing down after the 22nd for a brief period. We do the same thing with the GFS here and here's and see here's the key difference the GFS is kind of leaning a little bit more towards there being a little bit more cold air in place right around Western 10 and then also enough moisture where we can get some snow I don't think the moisture source is going to be the issue I really think that what's going to boil down to is the timing will that cold air make it to the moisture in time because warm air is often more moist cold air is usually a bit more dry so it's hard to get the two to exist in the same spot so we continue to go forward here see what i was talking about with that low pressure being a little closer to inland being uh, inland here look at that heavy snow possible here right around the new england region and then after that here's our clipper system again so it's pretty good confidence in that and then here's our other storm systems coming into play here nice little uh dive bomb here from some of that cold air so really depending on if that moisture ends up interacting with it whether we whether or not we see any uh, Ohio Valley snow here another place that I haven't talked too much about is Florida I do think down the line there could be some increasing uh, wet weather maybe even a chance of some stronger storms towards Florida as we head towards the upcoming weekend and that's not good because the Daytona 500 is over here it's a pretty big sporting event so definitely uh, bring the raincoats in and hopefully that race won't get rained out because I'm actually a NASCAR fan myself. But if not, it looks like Monday might be uh, relatively clear. So we might have a shot at getting that race in Monday, possibly. Once you get to 177 hours out, then we see the atmospheric river coming into play once again. And it looks like it's having, it has a little bit of a added ferocity here with the GFS. Then the Rockies also look like they get a lot of snowfall with this setup too. Eventually this becomes a really stout system for the Midwest. It might be even something to stream there. And then as we continue to go forward, we start to see that cool down begin to taper off. That ridge comes into play. We see that other atmospheric river starting to come in at the end of the model run here. But like I said, with that ridging, I do have a peaked interest in maybe some severe weather coming into play down the line because this is going to help push that ridge. This uh, storm system is going to help push that ridging upward. And depending on what happens behind this could be very telling. But of course, we aren't going to know that for at least a couple of days at best. That being said here, let's get on to the rainfall and the snowfall totals here. 
so across the board here this is what we're looking like on the blender models here a lot of that rainfall looks like it could be focused around tennessee after we get north of tennessee towards kentucky we might see more along the lines of maybe some wintry precipitation at that point of course out west atmospheric river we could see rain or snow towards these regions here so not really a surprise there and then if we just go across the board we're pretty much keeping a good level of uh, congruency amongst all the models from uh, the year all the way through to the NAM 3 kilometer. Same cannot be said when it comes to the snowfall here. Snowfall is a little bit different here. We have uh, the, the NAM kind of pushing towards eastern parts of Tennessee and central Tennessee, kind of excluding western Tennessee. And then we have um, yeah, my brain's not working. We have West Virginia here in the action. And then, of course, I think the uh, NAM 3 kilometers kind of pushing towards the Euro. The uh, So is the uh, British model here. And then Canadian, I think the GFS is starting to push more towards West Tennessee still, along with the Icon. And then, of course, the NAM's going the other way with this. So a little bit of confusion here as to what, or a little bit of uncertainty, I should say, more or more less than confusion for what's gonna happen over here towards West Tennessee. I have a couple of viewers that are asking about that area as well. So as a whole here, as we go further down the line here, of course, we have the uh, moderate winter storm signal here over towards the Northeast. And then as we continue to go forward, we'll see that persist at least through the next day or so. Once that storm system's out, we're gonna mainly be looking out West for a little bit and then eventually starting to look towards the Rockies and maybe the Great Lakes. Then after that, it looks like we may start right towards the end of this period to see a little bit of a shift further to the south here towards the uh, back half of the uh, Sierras here. And then it's interesting to note that even though we're as far out as we are 168 hours out to be exact, which is seven days, we're seeing a, an even stronger signal towards the southern Sierras here. So some pretty impressive uh, signal to a pretty impressive system to uh, have that kind of confidence this early on because when you see that little area in the red right there that's showing potential of maybe 60 to 70 percent to have that seven days out is notable then we go on to our flood threat obviously we have today being a heightened flood threat but then after that point we don't really see too much of anything thankfully within the next five days here so just pretty much a show of uh, what we have ahead here on this one if you appreciate what you saw here definitely hit that like button if you're new here definitely consider subscribing definitely uh share this channel tell your friends about it especially if they're into metal as well but um that being said i hope you guys enjoyed i'll see you guys in the next one till then it's been tyler metalhead weatherman take care and have an awesome rest of your day